I greet you all and welcome you to the Corporate Governance and Ethics Learning Session. Today we are going to the fifth chapter, which is Internal Corporate Documents. This chapter has eight sub-chapters. One is Constitutive Documents. Number two, Shareholder Agreements. Number three, Board Manual and Charter. Number four, Board Annual Work Plan. Five, Internal Regulations of the Organization. Six, Cause of Corporate Governance. Seven, Cause of Ethics. And eight, Performance Evaluation Tools. These are eight subtopics. Today we are going to study, first of all, the constitutive documents constitutive documents. But before we move to the constitutive documents, we need to define internal corporate documents. What are these internal corporate documents? Now, the internal corporate documents are confidential records and communications that are created and maintained within a company for its internal use and operations. They are not typically meant for public disclosure and are often protected by con confidentiality agreements or clauses. These documents, the internal corporate uh, documents play a crucial role in the day-to-day -day management, in decision-making, and governance of the company. And in the context of in the context of companies, constitutive, because this is our first document, set of documents, constitutive. documents in the context of companies constitutive documents are the fundamental legal documents that establish a company constitutive documents are the fundamental documents that establish a company and govern its operations. That's the meaning of constitutive documents. They are the basic, the fundamental, the key documents that one, establish a company, two, help to govern a company and there is essentially the company's constitution essentially they comprise the company's constitution outlining its structure purpose uh, the rules by which it will operate and these documents are legally binding on the company these documents are legally binding on its members and also its directors. That is to say that they are public documents that can be inspected at the registrar of companies. And any changes to these documents require a special resolution to be passed by the shareholders and such changes must be filed with the registrar of companies. That's the meaning of constitutive documents. Now, why are constitutive documents important? Why are these documents important, the constitutive documents? Number one, they provide what we call legal foundation of a company. They provide a legal foundation. They provide the legal basis for the company's um, 
existence and also activities. Legal foundation for a company's existence and activities. They are also necessary for the purposes of internal governance. They are important for internal governance. They establish the framework for companies internal governance, defining the rights and defining the responsibilities of the shareholders, directors and the officers of the company. Three, transparency and accountability. Transparency and accountability. They ensure transparency by making the company's objectives and operations public and they are also they also hold the company and its officers accountable to the rules that are set out in these documents. Four, dispute resolution. Dispute re resolution. Now, these documents can be used to resolve uh, disputes that may arise between the company and its members or among the members themselves. So these are four reasons why constitutive documents are important. And I've said that these documents, the constitutive documents form what we call the company's constitution. And the first key document is memorandum of association. The first constitutive document is a memorandum of association. The memorandum of association is the first constitutive document. In other jurisdictions, it's known as the Articles of Incorporation. And it is one of the most important constitutive documents of a company. A memorandum of association is a legal document that is prepared during the formation and registration process of a company that defines its relationships, that defines a company's relationship with the outside world. It serves as a company's constitution and provides a framework within uh, which the company operates. All right. It is a legal document that is prepared during the formation of a company, during the registration process of a company. And I've said it defines the relationship of the company with the outside world. It defines the relationship of the company with the outside world. Contents. What is contained in a memorandum of association? Number one is the name clause. Name clause. Name clause specifies the legal name of the company and the restrictions on the use of the name. Two. Registered office clause. The registered office clause declares the physical location of the company's registered office within the country. Three, the third content is the object clause. The object clause defines the main objectives of the company and it outlines the scope of activities that the company can engage in and the limitations of its operations. 
this clause is crucial or the company cannot undertake any activity that is not mentioned in the object clause. Four, liability clause. The liability clause. Now, the liability clause states the nature of liability of the company's members and it can be limited by shares, limited by guarantee, or unlimited. The limited clause. Five, capital clause. The capital clause specifies the authorized capital of the company divided into shares of uh, fixed amounts and states the number of shares that the company is authorized to issue and it also has to state the nominal value of the shares. Capital clause. Six, subscription clause. <clears throat> The subs subscription clause contains the details of the subscribers to the memorandum, including their names, their addresses, occupations, and the number of shares subscribed by each. That is the subscription clause. Let's now study the importance. The importance of memorandum of association the first obvious reason for having a memorandum of association is legal existence legal existence it is a mandatory document for the incorporation of a company a memorandum of association is a mandatory document for the purposes of incorporating a company and without it a company cannot come into existence two public document it is a public document it is a public document and can be assessed by anyone and that ensures transparency and provides stakeholders with information about the company's objectives and structure three protection of members protection of members this document defines the liability of the members providing them with the protection from companies' debts beyond the invested capital. This document helps the members to be protected from any liability beyond what they have subscribed for in the company. Three, this is four, scope of operations scope of operations number four the document defines the scope of the company's activities ensuring that the company does not deviate from its main objectives because we have the object clause that specifies what the company exists to do Five, it can be used as a reference document. Reference document. Reference document. It serves as a reference document for various legal and regulatory purposes. So these are five reasons why a memorandum of association is important. The second constitutive document is the Articles of Association. 
Articles of Association is another fundamental internal uh, corporate document that works in conjunction with the Memorandum of Association to form the company's constitution. And while the Memorandum of Association defines the company's relationship, relationship with the outside world, the Articles of Association governs the internal management and administration of the company. It governs the internal management. It's a document that governs the internal management of a company. Articles of Association is an internal corporate document that governs the internal management and the administration of the company. Internal management of the company. Here are the contents. Contents of Articles of Association, number one, share capital. Share capital. Now, the Articles of Association details about the rights of shareholders, different classes of shares, if any, the issue and transfer of shares, the alteration of share capital, the dividends and so on. Anything related to share capital is contained in the Articles of Association. The rights of shareholders, the different classes of shares, the how shares are to be issued, how shares are to be transferred, the process of altering the share capital, the dividends and so on, dividend clause and such like. That's the first content. Now the second content is on meetings. 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 These are rules regarding the convening and conducting of general meetings. The annual general meetings. The board meetings. The voting, uh, the, the procedure for voting quorum requirements. Anything relating to meetings is contained in the Articles of Association. Number three, directors. Directors. These are procedures for the appointment, procedures for removal of directors. There is uh, the issue to do with the powers of directors qualifications of directors, the responsibilities of officers like company secretaries, managing directors, and so on. All matters relating to directors is contained in the Articles of Association. Other than directors, number four, we have officers. Officers. The appointment, the duties, and responsibilities of officers like the company secretary, the managing director, and so on, is contained in the Articles of Association. You talked about directors' procedures, the qualification of directors, the remuneration of directors, the board composition should, comes under still the directors. So you have directors and other officers. Okay, officers. Five, borrowing powers. Borrowing powers. These are rules regarding the company's borrowing powers, the limitations on borrowing, the procedures for issuing uh, instruments like debentures, and so on. That is contained in the Articles of Association. Six, accounts and audit. 
accounts and audits. Here we have provisions for maintaining accounts, preparation of financial statements, appointment of auditors, conducting audits, and so on. All issues relating to accounts and audit are also contained in the Articles of Association. Seven, indemnification. Indemnification. Now, these are provisions for indemnifying the directors and officers for any liabilities that may be incurred while acting in good faith on behalf of the company. There are provisions to that effect. Eight, confidentiality. Confidentiality. Now this refers to rules to maintain confidentiality of the company's sensitive information. The articles should also stipulate the issues to do with confidentiality, particularly when it comes to sensitive information of the company. Nine, winding up. Winding up. These are procedures for winding up the company in case of insolvency or in case of any other reason. So these are the contents of Articles of Association, which you have said is an internal corporate document that governs the internal management and administration of a company. The first content is share capital. Number two, meetings. Three, directors. Four, officers. Five, borrowing powers. Six, accounts and audit. Seven, indemnification. Eight, confidentiality. Nine, winding up. Moving on, importance. Why is this document important? One, internal governance. It is a document that outlines on how the company ought to be governed. It provides clear framework for internal management of the company, ensuring smooth functioning and preventing disputes. Two, rights and obligations. Rights and obligations. This document defines the rights and obligations of the members, the directors, the officers, the rights and obligations of the auditors, the accountants, and any other officer of the company and that promotes transparency and accountability. Three, decision, decision making. This document aids decision making within the company, ensuring that decisions are made in a fair and transparent manner. for protection of interests protection of interests the document protects the interests of all the stakeholders by ensuring that the company is managed in a way that is consistent with its objectives so these are five reasons four reasons why the Articles of Association is important. We are moving on to the other constitutive document, which is by laws. By laws. By laws. Now, by laws are a set of internal rules and regulations that govern the operations of the organization. 
and by laws are sometimes in other, in other jurisdictions by law are just the articles of association in other jurisdictions bylaws are also known as articles of associations and they cover the same things like the directors the uh, officers amendments all right we have contents one the shareholders shareholders these are rules regarding shareholder meetings voting rights proxy voting transfer of shares and so on we also have directors bylaws we still have um, guidelines or procedures on how directors are to be elected the removal the compensation board meeting protocols quorum requirements and so on they are also just like the articles these are the officers other officers are the company secretary the auditors the uh, chief accountants their, their appointment their uh, responsibilities all right their duties and so on we still also have indemnification this is indemnification and the insurance provisions for protecting directors and officers from penalties or from personal liability for actions taken in good faith on behalf of the company you may also have amendments amendments these are procedures for amending the bylaws uh, which typically require the approval of the board of directors and sometimes the approval of the shareholders we can now briefly describe the importance of bylaws number one bylaws provide a framework for governance. Bylaws provide a framework for governance. They establish clear rules and procedures for how the company will be managed and how the company will be op operated. Protection of shareholder rights. protection of shareholder rights now bylaws ensure that shareholders have a voice in corporate decision making and are treated fairly three clarity of roles and responsibilities clarity of roles and responsibilities clarity of roles and responsibilities bylaws define the roles and responsibilities of the directors the officers the shareholders and that minimizes conflicts and misunderstanding between the officers of the company four ensure legal compliance the purpose for having by laws is to ensure that the company complies with rules and regulations they help the company comply with applicable laws and regulations so these are four reasons why by laws are important Now, candidates, bylaws are 
typically adopted by the board of directors at the time of incorporation and they can be amended by the board or by a vote of the shareholders depending on the specific provisions of the bylaws and the applicable law. And one may ask then what's the difference between bylaws and the articles of association? What's the difference between bylaws and articles of association? Because you say that both help in the internal management administration of the organization. Now, to answer that question, candidates, while bylaws and articles of association both serve as foundational documents for a corporation or a fundamental document or constitutive document, while both are fundamental documents, they have distinct purposes and levels of detail. On the one hand, the articles of incorporation or the articles of association are filed with the state or the registrar of companies. The articles of association is filed with the registrar of companies. And they establish the company's legal existence. So the articles of association and the memorandum of association, uh, they contain the basic information, such as the company's name, the purpose and 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 authorized share capital and and uh, the subscription clauses and all that. So articles of association and the articles of uh, um, the 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 articles of association and the memorandum of association are filed with the registrar of company, but by laws are internal documents that provide more detailed rules and procedures for governing the company. And they are not filed with the state or the registrar of, com uh, of companies and can be easily amended than the articles of incorporation. You understand? That's a major difference between the two. The articles of incorporation, which are the articles of association and the, the memorandum of association and the articles of association. These are the documents that form the legal basis of a company. But bylaws provide more detail they provide more detailed rules and procedures of for governing the company. And they are not filed with the register of companies. So that effectively brings the lesson to an end where we introduce the topic internal corporate documents. We began by considering the constitutive documents, which are the memorandum of association, the articles of association, and the bylaws. In our next lesson, we are going to study the second internal corporate document, which is the shareholder agreements. Shareholder agreements. For now, I leave you with the today's assignment. Today's assignment. One. What are the primary objectives outlined in Memorandum of Association for Organizations? Two, how can amendments be made to the Articles of Association and what is the required approval process? Three, what specific rights and obligations do bylaws confer upon members and directors of an organization? Four, 
what procedures are, are, are established in an organization's constitution for resolving internal disputes among members. And candidates will recall at the beginning, I say that all these documents, the memorandum of association, the articles of association, and the bylaws form what we call the company constitution. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Thank <music> you.